Why won't they tell me anything? Yeah, I know. Try to calm down. It's like they're hurting him all over again. We've been through all this, Craig. It does. It seems cruel, but they don't have to tell you anything. Yeah, lad. Get that down here. A flaming cup of tea's not going to sort everything out! OK? Yeah. He was my dad. He was a living, breathing person. And now they're just treating him like he's nothing. I want to go to the police station. And I'm not leaving there until I know exactly what's going on. We have to let them get on with the task in hand, lad. And what about me dad? No one's looking out for him. It's your mum that needs you now, Craig. I always knew Angela couldn't have done it. Now the police know that and all, it changes everything. What do you mean? Well, the sooner they tie up any loose ends, the sooner they'll be able to let your mother get out of that place. You really think they'll let her come on? Let's wait and see, eh? Well, they won't keep her any longer than they have to. She's an innocent woman. <coughs> Holy hen! Oh. You're looking well. That ain't catching, is it? Oh, it's just one of them 24-hour things, so I must have caught up somebody else in the first place. Hey, sorry I'm late. I'm just reading my fan mail. You've got fan mail? Ah, it's a price of fame, Warren. My media profile has gone up so much since I was in the weather for the Gazette. You were only in it yesterday. Must have written them yourself. Uh, actually, the Gazette rang me and said a couple of letters had been dropped off, so I went to pick them up. And I so didn't write them myself, because one, I would never use green ink, and two, it's still not my handwriting. <coughs> Tell Warren. Well, there's no smiley faces over the letter I, so no, Candice, <laughs> it's not your handwriting. You started looking for a new job yet, Candice? Well, it's a waiting game, isn't it? Just gonna sit back and wait for the office to come in, and in the meantime, I'll do a few haircuts. Actually, I've got a guy coming round later for a haircut. Candy, have you lost the plot, darling? Look, for all you know, this guy, he could be a psycho. Well, I hope not. He's coming round in half an hour. What? As far as my mother was concerned, the biggest piece of gossip was Tracy and Steve. I mean, what is going on in that lad's head? Don't ask me, I'm only his mother. Yeah, but can't you have a word with him? He's treating her with Tracy like a piece of dirt. Deirdre, text two to Tango. She was vulnerable. He took advantage of her. She virtually stalked him for I don't know how long. She's not blameless in all of this. No, I suppose not. But I don't know what's going on in his head. I mean, does he even like her? He's my son, and I love him to bits. But, you know, at the end of the day, he's a bloke. He'd rather chop his arms off than discuss his feelings. Yeah. Well, if he messes our Tracy about again, I might just chop him off for him. Right, then. I'm gonna have to come with you. Can't let a strange man go back to your flat. Look, don't worry about me. If he tries any funny business, I know exactly what to do. Yeah, well, if you're thinking of running away, you won't get very far in them shoes. No, I saw it on Charlie's Angels, right, yeah? Because there's this pressure point at the back of your neck, and if you just get your fingers and press dead hard on it, the bloke just kills over because you just go like... <gasps> Candice! Jamie, what have you done to Quick, you better call an ambulance. <sighs> Jamie, 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 get up. <laughs> oh, you rotten beggars. <laughs> you know, I knew you was messing. <laughs> Why did you go the colour of the chalk, then? Come on, babe, we best get going. And don't worry, I'll be your bloody girl. I won't bother being your mate. Oh. oh, I wish I'd never worn this top. The sequins are chucking themselves off like lemons. I can't do it, Eileen. I can't. My nerves are shot. I can't cope with the responsibility. Let's just get this into perspective, shall we? Now, a brain surgeon, that's quite a responsible job. Um, Diffusing a bomb for a living? Oh, I can imagine that would be quite nerve-wracking. You, however, are a bingo caller. Bingo is like a religion to these women, Eileen. Have you not seen them out there? All sitting quiet as mice, heads bowed as if in prayer. Oh, I think I might be ventilating. Well, you need to put your head in a brown paper bag. Have you got one? Yeah, I've got half a dozen. Of course I haven't got one. Put your head in my handbag, see if that'll help. Evening. So you bought your fan cub with you. That's nice. You OK? Not really, no. Oh, <laughs> lost your bottle, have you? Let me give you some advice, son. Speak loudly and clearly at all times. Really get into the rhythm of the calling and you'll be at one with the balls. And then you'll find yourself in the zone. Always listen for those magic words. When they come, by God, you'd better be ready. 
the magic words? Bingo! House! I've won! Yes, right, of course. If somebody wins and you miss it, they're going to flail you alive. As far as that lot out there are concerned, tarring and feathering will be too good for you. Hey, oh, hey, Roy. You coming down Vingo tonight, love? Oh, yeah, come on, Roy, let your hair down for once. I'll save you seat. Yeah, knowing you, it'll be Big Aggie's lucky seat, and we all know what'll happen then. <laughs> <laughs> There's loads of us going. You and Ella should come down. They're exciting, you know. Yeah, no, no, I'm well aware of that. How come? Have you dabbled before? I've read many reports on the subject. Have you been sneaking a peek at Ailey's magazines again? Uh, the phenomenon of bingo playing has been the subject of much research. Now, as I recall it, they monitored the heart rate of two sets of people. The first group were playing bingo. The other group were preparing to undertake a bungee jump. Oh, I think I'd rather stick to my bingo, if you don't mind. Hey, I can just see Vera Duckworth standing on top of a bridge. Be a crash after them. Yes, well, <laughs> apparently, they discovered that amongst the bingo players, the average heart rate increased from 60 beats per minute to 138 beats per minute. Oh, it's better than sex, then. I regret starting this conversation. Yes, and, and with one number needed to complete a winning card, that rate soared to in excess of 140 beats per minute. You better have strong hearts, ladies. You don't want to peg out before your number comes in. Well, exactly. I mean, I can bear the excitement. I really couldn't. Now, I take my hat off to anyone who'll venture inside a bingo parlour. Adrenaline junkies. That's what you call them. Good luck. Oh, thanks, <laughs> thanks, Ray. Come on, Fizz. What can I get you? Um, I think I'll try something a little bit different tonight. How about a tequila slammer? Or maybe a cocktail? Uh, a bit of lemon. Uh, no ice. <laughs> Got me lucky knickers on tonight. Oh, is that so you win a bingo or are you open to copper? No, I'm just, you know, keeping my options open. <laughs> <laughs> I've given up on my lucky knickers. They were redundant that long. I'm now using them as a duster. <laughs> Thanks, man. Cheers, mate. <laughs> Ty, do we have to go tonight? I promise, Vera. This is your idea of a good Saturday night out, is it? Now, the bingo with a load of old pensioners. A usual bingo partner can't make it. She's got a runner being stuck up her nose. I'm not even going to ask. <laughs> hey, so what's it like knowing you're working with a murderer? Do you know what? I always knew there was something weird about her. It's the way she always used to wear a scarf and wrap around her neck. Indoors. I hardly think someone's choice of clothing signifies propensity for murder. So... Take it you went to the prison then? Yeah, yeah, I did. It was awful. Angela was in a right state. Didums. Do you have to be so harsh? Not everything's black and white, you know. She didn't give a damn about you. She let you go and post that letter, knowing full well that you could be sent to prison. But that didn't stop her, did it? Right, I've heard enough. Angela's asked me to pass on a message to you all. She wants to set the record straight. When Katie died. She, she left a note, and in the note she told the truth about everything that had happened. And Katie confessed that she was responsible for Tommy's death, not Angela. I better get off now. Right. You don't have to go yet, do you? Oh, yeah. I should make a move, really. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I don't know what to do. Well, why don't you go and see one of your mates? I'm not just talking about today. I mean... Yeah. Go into town. Treat yourself. Why? What's the point? You give in to self-pity, lad. I'm telling you, you've had it. <laughs> I have lost my entire family. I'm entitled. You're young, you're alive, you've got the whole life ahead of you. Life! What life? This is no life! You want to knock that sort of talk on the head, lad? I'm 14 years old and I've got no future. Everything's gone wrong. I've lost my family. Took them for granted, didn't I? Thought they'd always be around, but no. No. I've got nothing. Do 
be honest, I have always thought that Tommy were a bit weird with her. How do you mean? Well, you know, dead possessive and that. I mean, think about how he kicked off about her and Martin. Well, it worked because Martin were, like, twice her age, though, eh? You don't think uh, Tommy messed with her? You don't know what went on with Katie and her dad. None of us do, right, and we probably never will. Well, it must have been something pretty terrible for a girl of 18 to do a thing like that. Sweet dreams, Katie. Night, night, God bless. <laughs> Won't be any rest for her if she is a murderer. She'll go straight to hell. Janice, for God's sake, how can you be so hard on her? I feel stupid, that's why. When I heard Katie topped herself, I couldn't stop thinking about it. I cried myself to sleep. Broke my heart for her. And now, now that I hear she's murdered her own father, left her mother to take the blame, and that poor lad all alone to bear the brunt of it, shouldn't have wasted my flaming tears on her. Amy's a real bonny girl, isn't she? She's going to be a right looker when she grows up. Steve! Steve, come and join us! Uh, no, I think it's best if I... Kieran, Kieran, do us a favour, will you? Bring us a pint over. Certainly, Your Ladyship. Thank you. Come on, you'll have to stay now. We'll take your coat off or you won't feel benefit. He was spitting on your anky and wiping his face with it next. <laughs> No matter how big they get, they're still your baby, aren't they? <laughs> it's nice, this, isn't it? All family sitting together. Yeah, right. The Adams family. Well, as long as I don't have to be the short, fat, bald one with a weird face. <laughs> <laughs> I'd better go. Will you drink a beer in a minute? Sorry. Did you see how it gets all nervous around you? You know, I'm convinced he still has a soft spot for you. Oh, for God's sake, Liz, just grow up. Well, not everyone can say they've had their hair styled by an up-and-coming star. <laughs> Any chance of me taking a photo? No. Yeah. Uh, perhaps not. But keep your eye on me in the media, because you're bound to see me at Heat magazine or on the TV. Hey, and you'll be able to say, Candy Stout, I met her once just before she hit the big time. What's going on here? Uh, is he wearing one of my capes? Oh, yeah, um, I only borrowed it, sorry. I'll see you later. Is, is, is it possible to make another appointment? No, there's no <laughs> chance of making another appointment. Mm. Audrey, there's no need to be rude to the guy. Dees, you can't set up in competition to me above my salon in my flat. Look, it'll just be for a couple of weeks, just till I hit the big time. No, Candice, you can't. I absolutely forbid it. But you can't forbid it, Audrey. It's my flat. I pay rent so I can do what I want up there. Right, lady, I've had enough of this. Get up the stairs, get your stuff and get out. So you're just going to kick me on the street just like that? Make me completely homeless? If your stuff's not out of the flat by 12 tomorrow, I shall burn it. Right? Fine. <laughs> you shouldn't have said that, Janice. Why you look under what she likes? I'm out to enjoy myself. Well, oh, the rabbles have arrived. Hey, Vera, you okay? Yeah. Well, I will tell you lot got here. Oh, look, he's a little Tyrone Dobbs. <laughs> <laughs> a thorn amongst all these roses. Oh. Hey. Are you a bingo virgin? Would you like me to show you what to do with your dabber? I've been to bingo more times than you've had at dinners. <laughs> Sad is that. <laughs> What the hell is this? Here, give us it here. What is it? Some kind of voodoo doll or something? Well, if it were, I'd put a curse on you lot. Come on, give us it there. Uh, not till you tell us what it is. You've got eyes in your head, haven't you? It's obvious. It's the Cliff Richards. <laughs> oh, I can see it now. Something about the hair. Well, it was a toss-up between him and Daniel O'Donnell. Only Daniel, he had a wonky eye, so I went for Cliff. Are you telling us there's more of these things, then? Oh, yeah, my friend Doris makes them. She does a lovely aim and arms if you're interested. No. <laughs> oh, come on, Frank, hurry up with that pizza, love. Mm. Let's get up. <laughs> Blimey, so you brought your make up. Well, that don't. She's in a bit of trouble. Didn't you, babe? Oh, please tell me she's not out of the dark. Danny, of course not. Thank you, there is a good. Oi, well, Mum, can she stay over? Oh, I don't see why not. Oh, I should have brought back a toothbrush and all that. Yeah, if Candy's staying over, then so's Leanne. Now, look what you've done. It's a lot of bags for one night, Candice. I don't believe in travelling light, dear. 
Yeah, it's just when I asked if she could stay over, well, I uh, sort of meant forever. Well, it'll only be for a couple of weeks, just till I find a new flat. Audrey's evicted me. No, no, I'm very sorry, that is not going to happen. Oi, get your feet off there. Which bit, then? All of it. I'll tell you what, no one is staying over. And I'll tell you something else, an old boy. Oi, <laughs> the torture. Never mind me feet, what about him? I'll tell you what, you can watch your film, eat the pizza, and then not have yet and get out. End of. Thank you. Oh, don't worry, Candice. You could always come home with me. You could sleep in Skip behind my flat. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, and those of you who are undecided. No, no, please, you're being too kind now. No, you're being more than kind now, you're being patronising. Right then, let's call the balls. Oh, bless him, he's just like a real friend. Eyes down, triple ass. On the road, number one, Kelly's eyes. <laughs> <laughs> you don't shout unless you've won your dosey mare. And you can't win anything with one number. 44, droopy draws. <laughs> That's you. Look, if you don't pipe down, I'll have your bad. Come in here, Lord, in the tone. I remember when I first started working at factory. I think they saw me as a, a bit of a curiosity. Well, total freak, if I'm to be honest. But over time, they got to know me and... Well, if I can blow my own trumpet to like me. Everyone likes you, Hayley. <laughs> I've always valued being one of the girls, but tonight I felt ashamed to be associated with them. Your integrity is intact. You've no worries on that score. They can be so cruel sometimes. Well, it's, it's a mob psychology. They're, they're like a pack of wild dogs. They get the scent of blood in their nostrils and, well, that's it. They're in for the kill. I've no right to criticise them. I'm not better than they are. In a way, I'm worse because I'm selfish. You're the last person I would describe as selfish. When Angela told me that she hadn't done it, that she hadn't killed Tommy, I felt this huge sense of relief wash over me. Of course. Angela's your friend. You care for her. I was relieved for myself, Roy, not for Angela. It meant that I'd done the right thing after all. I hadn't been conned into delivering a letter by some criminal. I'd helped a woman in genuine need, someone who really needed my support. Your actions have been totally vindicated. I know. I just wish it didn't matter to me so much. 81, I love my mum. Number 20, getting plenty. Come on, Sir Cliff. 69. Give me number 37. Come on, lad, you know you can do it. Do it for him to be, right? Don't be rubbing him too hard, Vera. You'll wear him out. Yeah, and she's talking from experience. Shh! Dirty, dirty, dirty. Oh, oh, really? That's me. I've won. Oh, oh, uh, Enid, we uh, we have a claim on thirty. Can we have a check, please? Jammy cow. You'll have to split it. You're joking, aren't you? Thirty quid between five of us. All right, I might buy you a bag of chips later. Oh, cheers. Right. It it's 200 Take quid jackpot in a minute. Time to get your finger out. Come on, bachelor boy. Hey! <laughs> Come on, Gold, just give us a smug. A oh, miserable old sod like you? No chance. Hey? Poor Candice. Oh, lad, never mind poor Candy. She brings it on herself. We can't just kick her out in the street. She's got nowhere else to go. Yeah, well, she should have thought about that, shouldn't she, before she went mathing off to Audrey? Oh, come on. One night's not going to work. Oh, Frank, love, you know it. You know it ain't going to be just one night, don't you? Cos once she gets her feet under the table, we'll never get shot of her. Oh, come on, babe, come on. I'll go right off you when you're mean. Oh, Frank, come on, love, I'll be... All right, one night. Cheers, Mum. I knew you'd do it. Oh, thank you, Frankie. You're brilliant. Ah, oh, well, don't make it so obvious. Please at least allow me the illusion of being master in my own home. <laughs> oh. Thirteen, I'm looking for some. Hey, I only need one more number. Oh, great. One in six, sweet sixteen, and never been kissed. Just like me. <laughs> Just give me this one number, Cliff, and I promise I'll buy all your records. Look at it, mate. Twenty-eight. Oh, ow! It's me! I've won him actually! Oh, brilliant! 
200 quid. Hey, it's wrong as this. There's some fishy going on here. Vera, it'll be your turn next time, all right? Oh, listen, your little love, you brought me some luck. Don't get too previous. I haven't checked your card yet. Hey, it's a fix is this. First of all, his mate wins at work, and now he's blaming landlady. There's something funny going on here. You won't have a word with him. He's on the fiddle. Mighty full house! Eileen Grimshaw wins this week's jackpot! Yes! <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. You're no better than a common thief. Oh, give over, Vera. Eileen won fair and square. It's a fix. They want barring, lots of them. Oh, Vera, it was a mental. There's no way I could fix it. It's all automated. Automated, my backside. It's a fix! It's a fix! It's a fix! Vera, it's would you a... shut up? Everyone's looking at us. Come on, we'll get a cheese and onion pasty on the way home, eh? Cheer you up. I'm going nowhere till we've had a proper investigation. Come on, love. Game over. Hey, the game's on. not over. Come on, you think you're going left? Come on. It's only just started. I'm getting the police in. And you! Oh! You took Sickliff's head off. He's a proper say, you know. What's that kind of to this? And I'm coming for you off for assault and battery. Ooh. Hey, I don't want to see your face in here again. You're bad. Go on. 